Now, my family, we are big planners and we love to plan our vacations. I'm the type of person that actually blocks out time in our itinerary for planned spontaneity. <laughs> Now the way we actually plan vacations is very similar to how we build project plans. We recently planned a trip to visit my little sister and I'm going to use that to introduce the concepts and the steps that we use to build project plans. At a high level we use five steps. Conduct research, list and group items, prioritize and sequence, assign dates and owners, and finally identify milestones. But let's start with conduct research. The truth is you never have to start from scratch and there's a lot of good stuff out there that you can adapt and leverage to your preferences and interests. Next is list and grouping our activities. We don't worry about ordering at this point and just list out everything we're interested in doing. Now, Once we've got a few items, we'll go ahead and start grouping these into high level categories. Now this grouping helps us a lot in the next step. Prioritize and sequence. As you begin sequencing, you'll take into account any constraints and dependencies. Like I said, we love to eat and we plan a lot of our events around what we're eating. The way we sequence and prioritize activities is usually before or after specific meals. Next, you need to assign due dates and owners. It really sucks when you show up at a restaurant only to realize no one made the reservation. It also helps to set expectations of knowing who's buying the tickets, who's booking the reservations, and when you need to get it done by before the vacation. Finally, identify key milestones. You generally know when large chunks of activities need to be done. This just acts as major guideposts throughout the year to know if you're on track. This is super helpful if you're, for example, saving for a vacation and having guideposts throughout the year of knowing when you should have 25, 50, or 100% of the money saved up. So to recap, how do you build a plan? Well, you start by researching what is already out there. Then you list out the items you want to do and group them into categories to help you organize. Next, prioritize and sequence those activities based on known constraints, dependencies, and your own logic. From there, assign due dates and owners when appropriate. And finally, identify key milestones. So there you have it, some high-level concepts and some steps to building a project plan. And if you're interested, here's our three-day itinerary to Seattle. As part of your job, you'll be assigned some small projects that you'll need to plan, execute, and manage along the way. Now, part of that is building a project plan that outlines the work and the key milestones. So let's dive into these steps a little deeper and then go over some templates as a guide. Here are the five steps of drafting a project plan. Now keep in mind, these steps don't have to be done in this particular order and most likely will be done simultaneously. But let's start with conduct research. You rarely need to start from scratch. Conduct research on any existing plans from any do document repositories that's available to you. Next is list and group activities. Based on your research, start listing the high-level tasks, activities, and deliverables. In this step, don't worry about sequencing or priorities. Simply get all your thoughts and ideas into one location. Once you have a few items, you can start grouping these into high-level categories or sections of the project plan. If you don't know where to start, you can always begin with these four categories. Planning and preparation, discovery and analysis, deliverables development, and finally ramp down and close out. Next, we're gonna prioritize and sequence, and you're able to do this by incorporating dependencies and constraints. So start organizing your tasks in each section with your own logical dependencies. Now, constraints on a typical project should include items such as budget, scope, and time. In your case, however, budget and scope will most likely be defined already. So the main constraint you'll need to work through is how much time you think should be allotted for each item to be completed. 
Next, we're going to assign due dates and owners. So add due dates and owners to each line item in the project plan. You can derive the due dates based on the time constraints you've incorporated. And for your initial projects, you'll likely be the owner for most of the work, but you can also include additional context of resources you think you'll need to support you. Finally, highlight key milestones. The end of each section in our templates usually signifies a milestone, and you can definitely start with that. So just keep in mind, this step is actually very important because milestones are usually what is rolled up into a status report so progress can be gauged and more quickly reviewed without going through a detailed project plan repeatedly. Here's one of the project plan templates in your toolkit. It's a pretty straightforward setup, but let's walk through this and how you can actually fill this out. In this scenario, we're going to create a plan for building out a new process flow diagram for one of the functional areas in our company. Now, as we start doing research and reviewing previous project plans, we start listing out the activities we think we need to conduct. From there, we start grouping these items in our high-level categories and continue adding more activities along the way. We're also simultaneously ordering these items in each category and eventually start transitioning these to the actual project plan template. From there, we start adding dates. We start with the dates that we know of. So in this scenario, uh, let's just say our manager asked us to review our plan by the end of the week, so we can put that date down. Uh, we also know the shadowing sessions are already on the calendar, so we put those dates in as well. And finally, we generally know when the final process flow should be complete, so we put an end date in there. From there, we start logically adding dates across the different activities to fit into the known dates that are already on our project plan. This is really a one-person assignment, so we just add our name to the owner section, but let's add additional detail of all the resources and teams that we need to support us along the way. Finally, we add our milestones. As this is just a draft plan, we'll just use the completion of each section and take the last date as the milestone end date. And there you go. This is a draft plan that's ready for its first review. Remember, as you're building out your plan, be sure to review this with your manager and any subject matter experts they recommend for additional input. Now, the last thing that we want to talk about is how to visualize these plans in presentations. So as you can see in this first template, it's very high level and focuses primarily on the milestones and deliverables of the project. The top half of the slide highlights what the critical points of the project will fall, while the bottom provides some additional context to those critical deliverables and milestones. This next template provides a more detailed full view of the project plan. You can actually see a breakdown of work and the duration of those items. One key piece of this slide is that red line that you see that cuts down from the plan from top to bottom. This signifies where we stand in the project, and it helps you quickly decipher all the work that is currently in progress, what is complete, and what is coming up. In your toolkit, we actually have a few plans of work you'll likely be assigned as you start on your job. So the first project that we have, and is the one that we used in this video, uh, is a process flow assignment. We usually need someone to help validate and outline current state processes on our client sites, and this project um, has to do with that. The next is a testing assignment. Uh, one of the best ways to learn technology is being on the testing team, and we'll likely assign you a task in this area so you can familiarize yourself with the specific technology and the different methodologies that we use. Next is data analysis. This is a growing need in the industry and something that always comes up on projects. We'll likely need you to pull information out of large quantities of data, and this will help us support project decisions and potentially strategy as a whole. Last is knowledge management. Organizing artifacts is in document repositories is a common task that is almost always neglected. So as you're starting out, this is a great way to support your team and add value immediately. It's also an added benefit because you'll be able to familiarize yourself with all the available resources and the content that's out there.